factor. For that, we will first consider a simple circuit consisting of an alternating voltage source across which purely resistive load is connected. For this voltage source, a current will flow through the load. As the load is purely resistive, there will be no phase difference between the voltage and the current in the circuit. For a purely sinusoidal voltage supplied by the source, let's draw the waveform of both current and voltage. Here in the picture, the black waveform represents the voltage and red waveform represents the current. Now, if the load is purely inductive instead of resistive, the current lags behind the source voltage by 90 degrees. It is shown here in this figure. The black waveform here also represents the voltage and red waveform represents the current. Now, if the load is purely capacitive instead of resistive, the current leads ahead the source voltage by 90 degrees. It is shown here in this figure. The black waveform here also represents the voltage and red waveform represents the current. Now, imagine the load has all resistance, inductance and capacitance and due to collective effect of these three parameters, the current shifts behind the source voltage by an angle theta. It is shown here in this figure, the black waveform here also represents the voltage and red waveform represents the current. Now come to the resistive load circuit. Here, if we multiply voltage waveform with current waveform, we will get the power waveform. Let's do that. For that, we will consider the voltage waveform as V max sin omega t and current waveform as I max sin omega t. And if we multiply them, we will get power P equals V max sin omega t into I max sin omega t. This may be rewritten as P equals V max into I max by 2 into 2 sin omega t sin omega t. This implies P equals V max into I max by 2 into 2 sin square omega t. This can be rewritten as sin square omega t plus cos square omega t minus within bracket cos square omega t minus sin square omega t. Or P equals V max into I max by 2 into within bracket 1 minus cos 2 omega t and this is power waveform. Now let's plot this expression of power waveform along with voltage and current waveform in same figure. Here you see the power waveform does not have any negative part although the corresponding voltage and current waveform do have equal positive and negative part. Now let's find the average value of this power and for that we have to integrate the power waveform equation 0 to 2 pi and divide it by 2 pi. Look here, this will ultimately come as V max into I max by 2. Now come back to the circuit where the load has all resistance, capacitance and inductance values. And due to the collective effect of these three parameters, the current shifts behind the source voltage by an angle theta as we have already shown. Here, as the current shifts behind the source voltage by an angle theta, the waveform equation of that can be represented as I max sin omega t minus theta. By multiplying voltage waveform V max sin omega t and current waveform I max sin omega t minus theta, we get instantaneous power P equals to V max sin omega t into I max sin omega t minus theta. After simplifying this equation, we get the final power waveform here as P equals V max into I max by 2 into within bracket cos theta minus cos 2 omega t minus theta. Now let's plot this expression of power waveform along with voltage and current waveform in same figure. Here you see the power waveform has a negative part. 
Now let's find the average value of this power. And for that, we have to integrate the power waveform equation 0 to 2 pi and divide it by 2 pi. Look here, this will ultimately come as V max into I max by 2 into cos theta. So far, we have calculated only average power of a purely resistive load and an arbitrary load with same sinusoidal voltage and current with same magnitude peak. Now let's come to the actual definition of power factor. Power factor is a measure to the degree to which a given load matches that of a pure resistance. That means it can be considered as the ratio of average power of an arbitrary load to the average power of a purely resistive load for same sinusoidal voltage and current with same magnitude peak. Hence, here the power factor would be V max into I max by 2 into cos theta by V max into I max by 2 which is nothing but simple cos theta. Hence, power factor can be defined as cosine of the angle between voltage and current in any load. But it is true only for sinusoidal alternating signal. But for other form of signals, it is determined by the ratio of average power of an arbitrary load to the average power of a purely resistive load for same sinusoidal voltage and current with same magnitude peak. Hope we could give you a basic 